Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome to Belly of the Beast, which yeah, I could say a lot about that title, and the fact that the CIA is on the cover, of course it's the goal. You know, I've said this before, I'll say it again, there's a lot of Seagull films I liked back in the day, from Above the Law and Hard to Kill to Mark for Death and Under Siege 1 and 2. Out for Justice is my favorite. I enjoyed The Deliver Man, Foul Down Below, Exit Wounds. I don't think On Deadly Ground was that bad. I, I enjoyed The Deliver Man. But man, this shit, like The Foreigner and Out for a Kill and The Patriot and Ticker and this movie. And for what I understand, this is considered one of Seagal's better directed video films and First off, I don't know why this car is on the top there. That looks like a car from Half Past Dead, which was another piece of shit movie he did. If this is considered one of Seagal's better directed video films, I'm in trouble. I mean, I'm up shit creek. I'm shit out of luck, as Clint Eastwood's, Eastwood would say from the Deadpool. Stripped by Chin Su, Su Tung, sorry I pronounced his last name. Co-stars Byron Mann, who is in the John claude Van Damme film Street Fighter. Byron Mann is decent, but he's not giving much. He's working as best as he can. Steven Seagal was once an operative. Him and Byron Mann were working, and they were having a meeting with these guys. Scenes went up shit creek. Seagal beats up two and shoots two, and... Barman couldn't see at one point and shoots at a bad guy, but he hits a woman, a mother, and he himself gets shot and Seagull saves him. So Byron Man is now and after we jump to about ten years later, Seagull he's just doing off and on jobs while Byron Man is a monk. He's a monk. And Byron Man, I don't mind him as an actor. And the few teeny bits we see of action from him, it seems like he can handle himself. I'm like, why can't this just star him? Again, from Above the Law to Fire Down Below, most of those films I enjoy. If you look at that from 88 to 97, most of those I enjoy, except maybe Executive Decision, and then after The Patriot Ticker, those are pieces of shit, but... Again, apparently some people like this film, and that's fine if they do, but to me, it's a lot of silly shit. It wasn't that entertaining to me. <clears throat> Maybe. What I'm mean by silly shit? Well, like I said, Byron Mann is a monk. Seagal is doing off and on jobs. One is to steal some shit. He goes and sneaks in. And he steals some stuff. And you can find this on YouTube. Billy the Beast slide on floor or something of that nature. Billy the Beast 2003, like slide on the floor, glide on the floor, something of that. Literally, in order to avoid bad guys, he slides and does a pose. Literally, he slides on the floor and for about 10 seconds, he's like this. While his whole body is sliding on the floor. If he's, as if he's a fat penguin. Just slides on the floor. And he holds that pose. like In his whole body. Oh my. This is some silly shit. This is like something you would see in a crappy comedy. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking this what the fuck slide on the floor? And then for Drew Measure, he steals the person's bottle of water from their fridge and then leaves. And the plot is his daughter is with some friends. His daughter and another girl get kidnapped while the two with them get killed. So he wants to find his daughter. He goes over, ultimately goes to Thailand. That's where his daughter was vacationing. And... This is 2003, so it was about five years before Taken with Liam Neeson. Well, of course, before you had films like Commando and many other films where a daughter was taken. 
and he won supposedly it's this terrorist group called the Abu Karaf, but instead it's another group of people misleading CIA, misleading other folks. Byron Man wants to come out of being a monk to help Sadal, even though Sadal tells him no, Byron Man is being a good guy. Byron Man, again, he's not doing much, but the, the little bits of fighting and little bits of his character, I'm like, let him be the lead. Let Byron Man be the lead. It would have been more interesting. Sadal, he's still too chunky for an action star. He's quite a few times, it's a fight double. I mean, I will admit, compared to, I've seen a few after this, I will be honest, because I'm kind of flipping back and forth and recording them to sort of get these out faster for you guys, and so I've seen a couple of films after this, and sadly, they get much worse, and you'll hear more about that. But you have, you have silly shit, and the way I explain this is probably going to get people to actually more to watch the movie than avoid it. But I'll save you the trouble. There's not only the laughable him gliding on the floor as if it's on ice, but then later on him and Byron Man are in a train yard, and you have a shot where Sigal's double flies out of the wall of the train, crashes through it, as if he's a fucking rhino, I guess. He's flying through the air, shooting at bad guys. But what's funny in the wide shot, like you see the wide shot of the body flowing, but there's a piece of wood right here, following him the whole time. Because <laughs> it's not Sadol, you gotta hide his face. So, while Sadol's double is flying, you have this one piece of wood Following him the whole time, just covering his face. <laughs> you have another scene where a fucking woman shows her tits to Seagal. I'm like, okay, way to get tits in the movie. Well, here's the thing. When her chest gets wet, it shows a tattoo. And I'm like, man, if it got wet somewhere else, that'd be a different movie. But no. Maybe one from Larry Flint. Gets wet on here. And when it gets wet, a tattoo appears for a message for Sadol. And I'm like, I don't remember back in the day you had those t-shirts that you did the... And it would like change color. I'm like... So you have Sadol gliding on the floor as if it's made of ice, like he's a fat penguin. You have him jumping through the air, crashing through a train with a piece of wood just... Have levitating over his by his face, the cover his face. You have a naked woman just showing her tits to him so that he could get she can get him wet. I was going to say so she can get wet, but that'd be you think of other ways of her getting wet. Her chest being wet to show a message, and then Sadol fights a woman who is really a man because okay has fingernail claws. A lot of wire foo, which I'm not a big fan of wire foo. I mean, to the point of the person is straight in the air, legs up. Imagine her legs and her head here, straight down on Sadol. And Sadol does a twist and person flies over there. Well, you find out some man takes the person takes the bra off and Sadol says, I like you much better as a bitch. And the general bad guy sees an old man with tattoos. So that in the last fight of the film between Seagal and his general, the man with the tattoos has a fucking voodoo doll that sticks in the Seagal, I guess, the doll. And the Seagal like, acts like he's kind of in pain. And I say act like he's in pain because he's like, mm. that's pretty much it. But luckily on Seagal's side is an army of monks we cut to while it's thundering and lightning doing this and fighting off the, the evil forces. So Seagal can beat up the general, do this thing here. 
hit him, and the guy literally, literally flies 50 feet. It, it has to be feet to feet. Imagine if this is the room, or hell, imagine this is the room, and the person is this big. He literally flies all the way back to the corner of the room with that one punch. See, if people like that over-the-top wire foo stuff, cool, but that's not my cup of tea in movies. It's not. It really isn't. Especially with a guy like Seagal, because there's also shots for the fight scenes. Yeah, Seagal does some of it up close, and honestly, they're, they don't have the impact, they don't have the intensity, especially of his early films, where it seemed brutal and violent. Here is more whimsical and almost as if it was a ballet dance or such. That's not my cup of tea if Seagal's going to do Aikido. But a lot of it, there's some that's Seagal, then there's a lot that's a fight double. And you can tell it's a fight double. Mainly if it's Seagal behind him, it'll be a fight double. There's even moments where the fight double is doing 360 kicks and doing insane agility that we know Seagal can never do in a hundred years. So I'm like, that'd be like if I stood up and I did a cut to a double where I'm flipping off the wall and I'm parkour across my room and I flew upside down on my ceiling, walking on the ceiling, and then I jump back down then it's me. Yeah, maybe for a comedy effect, but this is serious. This is supposed to be. This is not. Uh, this is not an action. This is not comedy. This is not parody. It, and people are like, oh, you're taking this too seriously, man. It's a Steven Seagal directed video film. Bullshit. I can name dozens of directed. As I go through all this stuff, bear in mind, if people go, well, it's a Steven Seagal directed video film. What do you expect? I can name a dozen movies from the top of my head that are sincerely good action films. You picked Van Damme, which I reviewed all of his films, Wake of Death, Until Death, Six, uh, Six Bullets, The Shepherd Border Patrol, The Order. How about Dolph Lundgren, The Defender, Command Performance. Battle of the Damned is fun. I like skin trade. Michael Jai White, Blood and Bone, Undisputed 2, Black Dynamite. Yeah, maybe it was shown in like two or three or four theaters, but mostly it was a directed video film. I look at films back in the day, like Riot with Gary Daniels, like Land of the Free with Jeff Speedman, Hell Dilly Alper with Jeff Speedman, which is not even on DVD. The film doesn't have a DVD, and yet. Even though it doesn't have a DVD, it's still better than this Steven Seagal shit from 2003 to today. All of them have DVD, but Daily Albert Jess Beam don't have a DVD. Why is that the case? And then, PM Entertainment Films I can name. There's no excuse that it's direct video, and people say, oh, it's direct video. Ninja 2 Shadow of a Tear is a damn good action movie. And that was a directed video film. Undisputed 3. I know there's Undisputed 4 coming out. I'll give it a watch one day. There's really good directed video films. Steven Seagal, no. I'm not giving them the pass. What is there to do the pass? Although Byron Man is alright. So you have the what the fuck slide on the floor. When she steals a bottle of water. Uh, his daughter gets kidnapped. Uh, one bit where he hits a guy who's trying to kill him in his taxi. There's a little fight in a market where quite a bit of it's Seagal's double. I mean, some of it's Steve, but you can tell when it's a fight double and he's doing insane acrobatic stuff. Or It's that also that fight where he hits a guy and the guy flies as if three wires are on him and he's fucking Pinocchio. And someone's got the strings. That's not my kind of fighting. And oh, I'll say this repeatedly, if you can't do your own fight scenes, get the fuck out. There should not be fight doubles. There should be no excuse. Stunt doubles, yeah, there's an excuse if it's too dangerous. A fight double? If you're an action star that can't do your own fucking fights, get the fuck out of there. Come on now. 
Anytime a fight happens, either Steve's doing some, but then you get really over-the-top stuff, especially from the obvious Seagal fight doubles. And then, even with it, with it is Seagal, people fly as if they're made of rubber bands. They're, they're made of rubber, and they're as light as a feather. That's not my kind of fight scenes. I talk about... Uh, you did a little bit of ADR, that's not Seagull's voice. You did a little bit, although there's a lot of movies that do a lot more. Out of Reach, the next one, and Submerged. Hell, half of Submerged, it's not Seagull's voice. And I'll get to that. You did a little bit, a teeny bit, of ADR, a voice of Seagull that's not his voice. But Byron is going to, like I said, Byron is going to help Seagull. Shoot out of the train yard and doing that laughable jump with the piece of wood levitating over his face. Seagal gets arrested. Little scene where he fucks up some cops. Is let go. Once in a while, cuts back to his daughter and her friend. For example, someone tries to rape the her friend, and Seagal's daughter stabs the guy and kills him. At one point, there's. Seagull getting ready to do a sex scene. I'm like, please no, I don't need to see a whale fuck right now. But thankfully they stop before it goes any further and cuts away. There's one scene where Byron Man seems to go fighting guys with swords. And people are, you know, they get touched and they fly around as if they're being made of rubber. Byron Man, the little bits of fighting you see, he seems good. He should have been the lead. Takes it all out of the picture. There's one more where Seagull throws a sword and a guy's impaled with the sword. Or at least we it cuts to the guy already impaled with the sword and he flies back another 10 feet. That's where you get, it cuts to, you know, get the girl with the tits and the tattoo that appears when it's wet. Again, I'd imagine if that also worked down there and that stuff would appear when it gets wet. Again, maybe that's the skin of match version, or Larry Flint version. That's where, then he said all fights the cross-dresser. Again, I think the way I'm making this sound is people are going to watch it. But I'm saving you the trouble. But be my guest. If you like the film, that's fine. Not me for me. And... Then Byron Man and Seagull, one thing leads to another, they find out where the girls are at. They kill some guys with silencers, blood squibs, practical blood squibs. Do you get the girls? Byron Man is shooting some guys while Seagull is. He shoots a fucking CGI arrow coming at him and breaking it. And the bad guy has a spear, Seagull has a sword. A little bit of Seagull doing it, but then his beat, the back of him, the double's doing all this crazy. Fucking 360 kicks, and I'm like, some girl can't move like that. And it's so easy to tell. They don't even try to hide it. They don't even try to hide it. It's ridiculous. If this was a comedy, sure. But again, I'm not giving the past. I've seen too many good direct video films to give a film like this the pass for me. I think it's shitty and it's silly shit. It's goofy, maybe it's laughable, it's weird, but I don't think that makes it good. Granted, it's not as bad as a foreigner because it's not as boring, but all those movies I rushed before, Daily Opera with Jeff Speakman, and all the films I, I've talked about in the past on my channel, they went direct to video that I like, action movie wise, and so, yeah, after the old man uses voodoo doll and the monks using, which made me think a little bit of Firewalker, which didn't take place at the end of Firewalker, but there's a scene where Chuck Norris was kind of drugged and this woman tried to kill and Louis Gossett Jr. and the girl trying to stop her and you have Sonny Landham's magic and the good guy, old man's magic. I'm like, yeah, remind me of a better movie, Firewalker I love. I love Firewalker. I rather be when I saw that I'm like, I'd rather be watching Firewalker right now with Chuck Norris. And that's where Sigal punches the guy in the face and does his punch and the villain flies back fifty feet. 
dead, I guess, from, from that. So the old Byron man ha has been shot, and he dies of his wounds. That ends with this sort of funeral and spreading ashes on the water, and then uh, sort of a, I don't want to say a pitcher, but on the water, sort of, Byron Man's, fa Byron Man's face appears, and the movie ends. So yeah, silly shit, goofy shit, Billy the Be- I'm sure people are, oh, why don't you make fun of the title? The, you know what? That's too fucking easy. It's too fucking easy to make fun of the title. This movie's too easy. Goofy shit. The only good actor was from Byron Man. Even at 90 minutes long, it was slow in spots. Wirefu. If you like Wirefu more short scenes, maybe this would be more your cup of tea. Obvious fight does the Seagull was the Seagull double fight double doing silly acrobat shit. And just goofy. F it, this is literally a Mystery Science Theater 3000 for Seagull film. Fighting a cross dresser and the ending with the old man with tattoos, evil forces, and the Legion of Monks good forces. I was waiting for some CGI shit to happen, but they didn't go that route. Guess I should be thankful for that. And the him flying off in the wood right in front of his face, and him floating like a like I said, like a fucking penguin on ice. Billy the Beast, man. Stuff you know what? Stuff this fucking movie in Seagal's face and swallow it. Just like he can swallow my dick. Fucking Seagal. And I know there's a lot of worse coming up, and that's what sucks. Later.